Hi, I'm Olaf the Code Coach. Let's check out today's legacy code breaking technique called Extract Interface. Okay, let's look at the legacy code dependency breaking technique called Extract Interface. This is a very safe sort of refactoring that we can do inside our legacy code to break some of the dependencies that stop us from wrapping unit tests around the code and we're wrapping unit tests around our legacy code to stabilize the legacy code before we make changes. So once we've got our unit tests in place, it means we can safely or more safely change the legacy code and we would know whether we've broken, you know, expected behavior that, you know, our end users aren't going to be happy with, which is, so this is one of the dangers with legacy code, you know, making changes you know, and inadvertently breaking some expected behavior. Our end users aren't happy, our managers aren't going to be happy and uh, our life just isn't going to be great. So um, let's look at a particular situation where extract interface might be useful. And to that end, um, let's go to my um, legacy code uh, solution in Visual Studio. All right, here we go. We are in my legacy code solution, which has got some examples of legacy code in it. These are you know, artificially created, I, I just produce these to sort of show uh, people how to apply these legacy code dependency breaking techniques, but it isn't actually um, real legacy code. So wherever you sort of see a dot, 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 more lines of legacy code, imagine, you know, another 50 or 100 lines of, of code that, you know, might well be there. All right, so last time we broke um, a particular dependency, uh, where we had a connection string that we got out of configuration, you know, using configuration manager, and uh, we parameterized this customer database constructor by passing in the connection string, and that got us a little bit further. But then we um, encountered another problem with the SQL database uh, over here, which we are kind of newing up as a concrete dependency inside this constructor. Um, which was really problematic. So just as a show where we kind of got up to, we've got this unit test here where we're just trying to bring this customer database under test. So what do I mean by that is we couldn't even, you know, instantiate using the new operator, this customer database class, because there were dependencies like the SQL database that I've just showed you in this constructor, and we couldn't even run through it. And uh, why do we want to run through this constructor? Because what we really want to do is we really want to make changes in get this get customer method. Okay. Um, however, we can't do this because it's an instant method and we can't even, you know, instantiate uh, the customer database. That's the very first thing we want to do before we can actually wrap unit testing around get customer. So let's kind of do this first. We kind of got up to here. And let's run this unit test just to sort of familiarize ourselves with what the problem was. All right, here we go. I'm going to just step into customer database. We can now pass in our own dummy connection string, which is what we're doing. And then here we are um, newing up a uh, instantiating a SQL customer database, setting a connection string. All right, from our the first part of the connection string, the zeroth index there, which is um, C O A N N, okay, con, all right. And it doesn't matter, this isn't a real connection string because we don't really want to connect to a database. That would be problematic. You know, the database would actually have to be there, it would have to be in the right schema, we would have to have the right test data in it, uh, it would be slow. That's why we don't want to, you know, do our unit testing against the database. And in fact, it wouldn't even be considered a unit test if we are testing against the database. Unit tests um, are really done in process, in memory, not doing network IO, right? Like going to a database or web service or something like that. All right, let's kind of carry on here. So we're setting this connection string. Okay, fantastic. And then this is where the problem occurred last time. See, okay, here we go. Uh, we kind of stepped into the SQL customer DB class and we're actually trying to connect uh, to our database using this um, a new SQL connection with a connection string. And it's kind of saying, hey, the connection string 
is in of the right you know format which is fine because it's just a dummy connection string we don't want to have a real connection string so i'm just going to stop this bang done we're kind of going to come back to here so how are we going to attack this i think maybe one of the techniques we could use is in fact parameterized constructor so where we put sql customer db onto customer this customer database constructor as a parameter and then we pass in sql customer db that might be part of the solution uh, obviously this particular video is called extract interface so <laughs> extracting an interface is going to come into it all right before we can even go there we might want to just looking at what the work we're doing here with uh, sql customer db split that up into that initialization of sql customer db into the separate statements one on each line so i think to start with we're going to have um, a sql db a local variable so it's going to be new um, sql db there we go like that so this is constructed using a default constructor which is exactly what's happening here then that guy is going to be oops so db dot we're going to set the connection string to that so that's the um, next part and then last but not least we're actually going to assign um, that new local variable of sql db to um, the the member variable here the class member variable sql db fantastic so construct using the default constructor set the connection string would be the next part here and then last but not least assign to sql db and the reason that i've split it up like that will shortly become um, apparent i can delete that they were in fact equivalent one is just more compact than the other so what we can do now is we want to put sql customer db on as a parameter for this particular constructor so i'm going to do that now and i'm going to call that sql db let's do it like that and what that means is that sql customer db is going to be constructed outside of customer database when calling this constructor which we're going to be using for unit testing this constructor up here we're going to be using for the runtime at um, in production okay all right so which means this line here ought to be deleted okay fantastic so there we go done that so what that means is outside of here sql customer db is going to be created using some sort of default constructor and then we're still setting the connection string in here and then the sql db gets assigned to the class member and we are sorted all right up here we've got a complaint from our default constructor okay it's pretty obvious what's going on we need a second argument here which of course is going to be new sql customer db which is what we had before just in here now we're doing it outside um, of this parameterized constructor but of course our production you know or runtime constructor this default constructor we still want to you know use the actual sql customer db class to get access to the production runtime you know and run come in in your production environment to use that particular um, database all right so this is looking good um, one particular problem that we have got is that uh, if i kind of come out here right we've got our customer database um, what i can do here is go new sql customer db is that solving our problem no it's not okay unfortunately we're still using the exact same class that can tries to connect to a sql database after we're giving it this um you know uh, invalid you know or, or, or dummy connection strings so that this isn't going to work we're still trying to connect to an actual database we will want to have something else here how do we 
get into a position whereby we can actually pass in a different kind of database, like a, a dummy kind of database, because we're not, we're not concerned about actually connecting to a real database. A dummy database for this unit test will do the trick. And the way we do that is by coming in here and turning a, turning this particular parameter here into an interface. So let me go into SQL customer DB class and say uh, I'm using ReSharper, but other refactoring tools um, will allow you to do the same thing, which is kind of coming into refactor and it says extract, and I'm selecting extract interface. And now we get an option, it says name I SQL customer DB. Yes, that will do for the, um, the interface here. And we want to include the connection string as part of the interface, but definitely we're setting that. Um, what about the connect method? Yes, we want that as well. And then a little bit later on, I think we want the get customer call as well. So I'm going to include that as well. Sometimes you don't need to include all the methods. Okay, maybe that might be uh, given this legacy code, you might have 30 or 100. But for what you're doing here, you might just want, you know, five methods or properties. So let's just do this. Okay, cool. Let's put it in the same file. That's fine for now. And as you can see, um, it's already made it so that our concrete class SQL customer DB implements I SQL customer DB, which is great. I'm going to switch back to the customer database. Here we go, which uses SQL customer database and make it now change the parameter to I SQL customer DB, which is nice. But now we've got a problem here. I SQL customer DB cannot be assigned to SQL customer DB. So let's change that field as well to I SQL customer DB. Um, as you can see here, because SQL customer DB implements I SQL customer DB, we haven't broken anything. Okay, just by changing it from the concrete SQL customer DB parameter to the I SQL customer DB parameter type hasn't changed anything okay and um with regards to working f with the sql customer db concrete type and our customer database as uh, so a unit test here that will work as well okay however this will not solve our problem and, and to prove the point what i'm going to do is i'm going to paste a breakpoint quickly step in here all right just turning it into an interface isn't enough. Okay, here we go. We've got hit the breakpoint, stepping into customer database. We've got the type here is still SQL customer DB. Come in here, and then when I step over the connect method call here, it'll break as before. Bang, it does. Here we go. Because we haven't actually changed anything. We've changed the structure a little bit, but the call is the same as before. We're still calling into this concrete SQL customer DB class, which is actually trying to connect to a, um, a SQL database. Not good enough for our unit test. What are we going to do? Well, let's go and make a change. Let's come along here and create a um, another class to help us with testing public class dummy SQL customer DB let's call it that and it's going to implement I customer DB that's a really important part it needs to implement this I customer DB interface otherwise this isn't going to work and then we can say hey implement missing members Yes, all of these, please. Thank you. So we've got connection string. We've got the connect method that we're interested in. Get customer. That'll become important later on, but not right now. I'm going to remove this not implemented exception. So we can step over, connect. Oh, okay. And it's, it returns a SQL connections. I'm just going to return a null for now. I think that might be okay. All right. 
and SQL customer DB is what we're going to use for our unit test. All right, let's try this out. We've done a lot of work. Let's actually see um, and check that we can get customer database under test so that this unit test will work. We're going to debug into it. Here we go. Okay, we've hit the breakpoint, step into it. And our SQL, so iSQL customer DB is a dummy SQL customer DB type, which is lovely. All right, come along here, we're splitting the connection string. We're setting the connection string. Nothing has changed. And now we're going to call the connect method on whatever our iSQL customer DB is, which is our dummy SQL customer DB. Uh, how do I know this? I can tell from up there, but let's just actually step into this. Here we go. Bang, we're actually coming into our dummy SQL customer DB. We have changed the way our unit test um, works without changing the code inside um, our customer database. Here we go. We're just returning the null because we're not really interested in the um, SQL connection. We just want to run through this code here, the constructor for customer database. And I imagine oftentimes we might have to do some more dependency breaking, um, but we don't have any more legacy code here in this constructor, so we are okay. Um, here we go. Just run through the unit test. And done. Nice. So the unit test is now passing. We've um, broken another dependency, um, made it through the unit test, and we've done that by extracting um, an interface, but also, you know, parameterizing the constructor uh, further with a second parameter, which was initially the SQL customer DB, but then uh, we turned it into the interface, iSQL customer DB, and um, our unit test is working. We've brought this constructor under test, and we're a little bit closer to getting this unit, um, this customer database class and its method um, get customer under test. Well, I hope you you learned something about uh, how to break dependencies in legacy code. Uh, hey, if you like this video, please hit the like button and I suggest you subscribe to my channel for future videos on how to manage legacy code or software craftsmanship. Thank you very much for watching.